All right, I don't want to alarm you, but today we're talking about something that's sneaking into the food you eat, the air you breathe, and even into your body. And those are microplastics. But instead of overwhelming you with fear, I want to walk you through eight practical ways to reduce your exposure to microplastics without flipping your life upside down. Let's dive right in. Number one, ditch plastic water bottles. Plastic water bottles break down faster when they're exposed to sunlight and heat, and those breakdown products can leach their way into the water. Stainless steel or glass bottles are much better options, especially if you're bringing them outdoors, say on a hike or you're doing some cycling and especially if you're hitting the sauna or leaving them in a hot car. And yes, the aluminum bottles that you'd find in the airport, even some of those are lined with plastic. Number two, stop heating anything in plastic. Microwaving food in plastic containers or taking takeout coffee in a paper cup that's still lined with plastic, heat speeds up chemical leaching dramatically upwards of 55 times in some cases. So when possible, switch to glass containers like Pyrex or bring your own stainless steel or ceramic travel mug when you can. Even the things that you wouldn't think about, like microwavable popcorn, the inside of those bags are lined with PFAS chemicals, which are also known as the forever chemicals. So if you can make popcorn for yourself the old fashioned way in a pot, it may be much better for you. As you're hearing here today, it might be time to make some changes in how you consume food, not just what you consume. Now there are a few practical tips to put into action and before we detail more of those today, remember this, microplastics are tiny plastic fragments. The textbook definition is a plastic fragment that's less than five millimeters in length. Think about less than, often, a uh, sesame seed. And they're everywhere. They come from packaging, clothes, tires, even your face wash. We now find them in fish, honey, beer, even the air you breathe in. And unfortunately, they're getting inside us too. They've been detected in human lungs, blood, and even placenta tissue. A study from the Worldwide Fund for Nature showed that people could be ingesting up to five grams of microplastics a week. That is the size of a credit card. And in animal studies, these microplastics have been chose to cause inflammation, oxidative stress, and even hormone disruption. So if you're about improving your health, which I know you are because you're watching this video, it makes sense to be mindful of your exposure. Because if you're trying to eat healthy and you're working out all the time, it only makes sense not to drop the ball on something as simple as this. Now, are humans dropping dead from microplastics every day? No, they're not. But some of these plastics can contain phthalates, BPA, and those PFAS chemicals, chemicals that mimic hormones and are linked to infertility, cancer, and developmental issues. So we gotta use the precautionary principle here, which is, if you see a lot of smoke, then maybe you should move away from the fire. You're not going to completely eliminate your exposure, but that's not the point. You should still reduce it. Reasonable reduction is the goal, and here's another thing you can do to reduce it. Number three, filter your drinking water. Depending on where you live in the world and your access to fresh water, it might be a smart idea to filter your drinking water. Whether it's a pitcher on the counter, an under sink filter, or even a whole house system, filtered water helps reduce your exposure to a lot of these chemicals and microplastics. Reverse osmosis systems are the gold standard, uh, even though they are more expensive, but they can even catch nanoplastics. Number four, upgrade your cookware. Think about the stuff that's in direct contact with your food. Nonstick pans can be really convenient, but they're typically coated with PFAS chemicals and other hormone disrupting compounds. So instead, go old school with stainless steel, cast iron, or ceramic coated options. And skip the silicone muffin trays because those are gonna leach chemicals even more effectively when they're hot, especially with acidic and fatty foods, which we're gonna detail next. Number five, pay attention to food packaging, especially with more acidic foods. Acid breaks down plastic just like heat does. That means things like tomato sauce, fruit juice, or vinegars can leach plastic compounds into your food much faster. So use glass containers for leftovers, and when possible, choose condiments and oils that are found in glass bottles. And although they can be really convenient, I talk about them all the time to increase your fruits and vegetable consumptions, bagged salads, 
cut up fruits and vegetables in plastic containers. They can be concerning when it comes to microplastics. So when possible, rinse and swap them when you can. Let me be clear though, I'm not encouraging any of you to rinse your fruit at social events. Being too neurotic about this stuff is probably more dangerous than focusing on cutting it out. Trying to eliminate this stuff entirely is only going to happen at the policy or government level. But until that happens, there's still some things that you can do on an individual level to reduce your exposure. So just focus on that and do what you can and don't get too crazy with this stuff. Now, as you're starting to notice, a lot of these microplastics are coming from the packaging and the preparation itself and not the actual foods. But since microplastics are everywhere, they can still find their way into your food even before the prep and the processing. Here are the top 10 sources of microplastics in food. Starting with number 10, milk. Milk can pick up microplastics from the plastic tubing involved in the processing and even plastic lined containers. And so many people are now drinking ultra filtered milk, which is great because it has higher protein but that only comes in plastic bottles. So be mindful of that. And hopefully someone can do something about that because that type of milk is a game changer. Twice the protein. Number nine, rice. Both white rice and brown rice have been found to contain microplastics, likely from contaminated water during processing. Number eight, fruits and vegetables. Obviously these foods are quite good for you, but we need to be mindful of their microplastic exposure, which can come from contaminated soil or water or the air. Next up, number seven, teas, especially tea bags with those plastic or silken type bags. Certain mesh style tea bags release billions of super small particles when they're steeped in hot water. Number six, table sugar. You're probably not crushing a lot of table sugar if you're watching this, but table sugar is often contaminated because it is stored in big plastic bins. Traces of plastic fibers have been found in honey, and this is likely due to environmental exposure. Number four, beer. Microplastics can enter your beer supply through the water that is used in the brewing process or storage in plastic containers. Again, this isn't as big of an issue with microbreweries, so it might be best to shop local instead of more commercial beer sources. Number three, sea salt. Sea salt can be an issue because it's typically harvested from polluted ocean water. Speaking of ocean water, number two, fish, especially whole fish. Fish consume plastic contaminated organisms, especially those in polluted marine environments. And number one, shellfish, especially oysters, mussels, and clams. These filter feeders contain the highest levels of microplastics. And since we eat them whole, digestive tract and all, they can be more problematic. So that gives you a better sense of where microplastics are found in your actual food and maybe what you can limit. And if you're thinking maybe there's some sort of difference between organic and wild for some of these food sources, there isn't really. Buying organic can reduce some chemical exposures in your food herbicides and pesticides, and maybe some additives. But typically what you're looking to do if you're looking to reduce microplastic exposure is reduce plastic packaging and where the food comes from and foods produced in environments with less overall pollution, which isn't a guarantee with organic. Next up though, what's happening back in your environment? Number six, rethink your workout clothes. Yes, even your active wear might be part of the problem. A lot of moisture wicking material is made from polyester and some PFAS compounds, which can build up in your body over time and take years to break down. And if you're sweating and moving, which is essentially creating heat and friction, that's the worst combination. Switching to cotton and natural fabrics, especially for kids, might be a helpful swap. Also, what you breathe is important. So number seven, rethinking your air quality. Microplastics aren't just in your food and water, they're in the air you breathe too. Dust particles, dryer lint, clothing, fibers, we breathe all of that in. That's why Dr. Peter Atia, he's got a great video on this topic as well, check that out. He recommends upgrading your HVAC system to something with a HEPA filter or just using a HEPA filter where you sleep and work. That can make a big difference for your air quality in your home or at your workplace. Bonus points if your vacuum has a HEPA filter too. Lastly, here's one more thing you can do about microplastics. Number eight, sweat it out. Yes, you can sweat out BPA and some heavy metals, 
through hot yoga, through cycling, through intense exercise. And my personal favorite, the dry sauna. But the majority of detox is still gonna happen naturally through your liver and kidneys. Some compounds like BPA can be made easier to excrete when you support the, the detoxification pathways. And sulforaphane, which is found in broccoli sprouts, or even in broccoli supplements, has shown some promise in helping you detoxify. And if you're curious, you can use lab tests to track your microplastic levels through time. And that's it folks, microplastics are tiny small particles less than five millimeters in length. Some are manufactured that way, others are the product of the breakdown of plastic, and they come from food packaging, car tires, synthetic clothing, water bottles, nonstick cookware, even the dust in your home, which also means they'll show up in different areas like in your food and water, especially shellfish, and bottled water and packaged foods, which also means they're gonna show up in the air you breathe and even in your lungs and circulating blood. And what this means, why it's important, is that microplastics can often contain chemicals like BPA, a known hormone disruptor, phthalates and PFAS chemicals, which are known to be linked to infertility and cancer and metabolic issues. And recent evidence has shown that they can accumulate in your organs, trigger inflammation and oxidative stress, and disrupt your normal natural hormones. We don't have all the human data yet, but there's enough evidence to suggest that we should be following the precautionary principle. It may be harmful, and there are things that you can do to reduce exposure, so why wouldn't you? Can't eliminate this entirely, but you can reduce your exposure with some of the tips that I shared today. Upgrading your water filter, avoiding hot plastics, and choosing different cookware, it can make a big difference through time. I'd love to know if you're doing anything at all to limit microplastics down in the comments below. Start with what's easy, build momentum, and protect your health without stress. If you found this helpful, give it a like or even share it with someone that is still using a plastic water bottle. And that's it folks, those are eight ways to reduce microplastics in your life to improve your health. And if you're really serious about improving your nutrition and your fitness and health, the next thing I'm gonna have you do is check out this video I've linked up right here. Today we talked all about microplastics. Next up, you're gonna learn all about the science of gut health. You'll learn a bit more about that in this video right here. So check it out now and I'll see you in the next video.